thank you very much for taking part in this project of mine. Thank you, Rose. It's my pleasure to be part of this wonderful project. Yeah, so you've read the book, The Retelling. I've read, I've read the book. Very fascinating, very interesting. You, you shared it with Tess, you were telling me what Oh, I, I was reading it late last late last night. Okay. And she was she kept asking me, what are you reading so late uh, <laughs> in the night? I said, I have to read this. Uh, I have a commitment uh, to a friend to read this, uh, Rose. And, oh, I, I, I know Rose. And then then I was reading, I was leaving through the book. And then I, I really genuinely uh, found it interesting and uh, went quickly through the book. And then... It was, she was looking at me uh, all the time and then after I put down the book I went to the toilet and when I came back she was herself uh, reading the <laughs> book already <laughs> so it was that uh, interesting because uh, <clears throat> what we both thought the book was in, in, in so few pages and in simple very simple terms it delivered very key messages about uh, money particularly how you can ma ma manage your money better. So, for example, I, I found um, quite refreshing and delightful the presentation of the concept of uh, saving. Yes. So rather than from the perspective of sacrifice, meaning you set aside uh -huh. something and deprive yourself, okay. actually, the, the, it ingeniously presents the concept of savings as something that you basically uh, owe to yourself mm -hmm. so no, no guilt at all you should be doing it regularly uh -huh. so that's a to me that's a very powerful uh, concept to deliver especially for uh, young people who are just beginning to learn how to manage their money right. uh, maybe we would like to share with us any childhood money memory <laughs> that you remember okay that's interesting <laughs> uh, we are a for a long time we're actually a family of five but for a long time uh, I had three sisters in front of me, mm -hmm. and I was the youngest and the only boy. So we get our allowances. Was but that the weekly allowance also? Yes, we get. But well, actually, we get our daily allowances mm -hmm. uh, for school. So I generally um, was careful in managing it, and usually ended up with a surplus. So oh. uh, then, I by the end of the week, I had uh, quite a bit uh, saved up. Mm -hmm. But uh, I realized that my sisters, they tended to uh, max out their allowances. <laughs> so very often, I found myself uh, acting as their banker. So they would come to me and uh, make bola to me and uh, beg me if they can uh, get, get a little advance. <laughs> so uh, big sisters, and I'm quite fond of them. So I, I lent them money. Uh, but they, pay, but they but pay they back. Paid. But uh, they pay back. I wonder if you charged interest. <laughs> no, I, d I did. I that one I didn't get at the time, so I didn't charge interest. But um, they were especially nice to me. So, so to me, uh, that's already part of the interest. Uh, that they <laughs> okay, paid. so they'd be extra nice to you <laughs> that's in return. Right. Yeah. So for them that's money. a to me a good introduction to money management. I didn't know that down the road I would be exactly, in, in, in this uh, yeah. line of business, uh, central <laughs> banking. Yeah, so there were already seeds about it. <laughs> yeah, so you were saying early on you were already the banker of the family. <laughs> it seems like like that. Tinadhana. <laughs> but who do you think really influenced you the most? Why did you become very prudent with money? Early on, and you know, usually the boys are the ones who are not so prudent with money, and the girls are more prudent. In your case, it was the opposite. Um, my, my dad was quite uh, generous uh -huh. to me, uh, especially because the I was only boy. I was only boy, and I was actually an honor student. So yes. I, every time I do very well in school, so I get uh, something extra. But uh, my mom. Uh, she always reminded me to be always uh, to be thrifty to manage my money because um, it will not always be uh, you always you cannot always expect to get something so yeah. you should be ready for uh, times when you don't we when there's nothing coming in and you and you need money so so I, I try to manage my money uh, well and that's also how I became my the banker to my sisters, who apparently did not 
fully uh, uh, imbibe the lessons that were given then by my mom. But it was my mom who yeah, was actually mom. Uh, kept reminding us that uh, we should be uh, more responsible with uh, money and Okay, can you also share with us the BSP initiatives uh, in this field of um, spreading financial literacy in the country? Oh, great that you asked that question. Uh, because a lot of people, even us within BSP, uh, we tend to focus on the serious stuff of uh, managing the banking system, making sure that it is uh, safe and sound. And uh, increasingly, we, are, we have asked uh, people or we have asked, uh, well, we've been asking actually people to save, uh, to save in banks. But uh, we're also uh, realizing that a lot of people uh, get into trouble uh, over uh, finances. Like, for example, people who overborrow right. uh, because they do not save. And, uh, and if credit is uh, easy to get, they borrow and keep, keep borrowing until that point that they can no longer uh, pay up and then uh, then they get into even deeper trouble by let's say going to other sources that are even more uh, that charge even higher rates or give them the informal sector so the informal sector so uh, plus uh, the message that we are sending is we are trying to make the banking system more inclusive but we realize that as people use uh, financial services more, uh, they, they need to have knowledge mm -hmm. about how to use it properly. But even before that, how to have money uh, yeah. to save to begin with. Because that's actually a basic problem. If you look at the statistics, um, a lot of people apparently don't save or cannot save given mm -hmm. the low income. But uh, we've also... Uh, come to appreciate, and this is based both on observation and on study, that even uh, people who you would think are not in a position can in fact save. So it's really more of the attitude of it's, it. It's attitude. Yeah, you can, you can only attitude. save something of whatever it is correct, that, correct. that you have. So our messages are to encourage people to save, but also at the same time we're getting our financial system to reach out yes. and make saving easier and more ex accessible to, to people. So these are the messages that we are trying to yeah, send. Because I actually noticed that uh, for your kiddie, th there was a mandated circular, Kid right? savings yes, program. that the banks should have kiddie savings program, wherein the minimum is a lot lower than the usual minimum of an account, yeah. right? Yes. Well, it's not, it's not mandating, but banks are highly encouraged, encouraged. to okay. participate and to make it uh, accessible to young savers to, yeah. to remove the minimum the balance barrier. requirements and the response has been uh, very good so a lot of banks have uh, voluntarily opted in into yes. this uh, program yes. so we are now reaching out to more depositors yes that's right okay. first of all uh, I think it's a the, the first challenge really is to create the opportunities for uh, generating income, income source, so livelihood, uh, livelihood services. That should be a priority. But then uh, I would say closely at the heels of that, uh, the, the, the knowledge and the means to be able to save some of that uh, income so that it can be used for uh, let's say for future needs or uh, to invest so that uh, the month that the whatever savings can uh, continue to grow I think these two things come uh, closely hand in hand uh, with one another. they should come together so right, they don't yeah. get used to spending <laughs> exactly because if you have cash flow and actually that's the concern because today we're seeing a lot of our younger people at an early stage having um, Having income that's uh, quite high yeah. by uh, by the usual standards, and uh, if such uh, earnings are not let's say set aside and saved even for uh, one's own uh, continuing education or for some other um, 
investment or business and just uh, spend the spend in consumption then that's a that is a that is a concern yeah. that is a concern and even our uh, you know we have many uh, countrymen who work overseas mm -hmm. and they send their uh, savings home to beneficiaries and if the family members who receive this uh, are not able to save this and keep it for future needs and just uh, immediately spend it in things that are not really essential, not really essential mm -hmm. then, then that's also lost yeah. opportunity. That's why the, the, the simple uh, lessons contained in, in the book that uh, you wrote, those uh, should really be resonant with a whole, uh, with a wide range of uh, people. Yeah. And so it should start with your brain. That's <laughs> right, that, that's right. And even if uh, at teenage level and even young adult level, I think the lessons contained <laughs> here uh, is very is very valid. It continues to be valid, and I think uh, but that's also one thing uh, in terms of presenting uh, these kinds of uh, learnings. Your approach of uh, simplifying it and making it concrete and real. It's quite powerful. Uh, we should learn from that uh, mm -hmm. approach. We, Thank you. <laughs> we we should try very hard not to yeah. make it very complicated, very technical, <laughs> uh -huh. and very complicated. Yeah. This one you remember right away, and you can uh, you can uh, relate. <laughs> you can relate, although it's uh, set in an exotic setting. Yes. But you can relate. You can easily uh, you can really easily translate that to your own uh, environment. Congratulations, Rose, for completing another book, FQ, The End of Intelligence. Money management and financial literacy are necessary life skills. It's an intelligence that needs to be nurtured in children and adults alike. Life requires financing and being money smart. Life also brings with it various risks that affect so the source or flow of such financing. Financial literacy equips us with knowledge to manage this risk by enabling us to better handle our finances, save and prepare for the future, ensure against unexpected shocks, as well as take advantage of economic and financial opportunities. The BSP believes that a financially educated people with the ability to understand, select, and use financial services that fit their needs can gain maximum benefit from participating in the form of the national system. They can better protect themselves from fraud and harmful financial practices. They can be more effective partners of the BSP in maintaining stable prices and ensuring a stronger, safer banking and payment system. They can contribute more productively to the Philippine economy. I'm very glad that Rose is adding her compelling incredible voice to those of many other advocates of financial education.